Hello friends, this is Vivek Bajaj, co-founder of StockEdge and Elon Markets. Friends, as promised, I'm going to start a new series called Stocks to Watch. And in this series, I'm going to do a techno funda analysis of specific stocks. Uh, very, very excited about this series because I'm going to talk to a lot of analysts while I'm going to record videos in this series. And each analyst will have a very, very strong understanding of that stock and they will share their input to all of us. Apart from that, I will also try to decode the technical perspective of each and every stock so that you can clearly get a holistic perspective about what to do in that particular stock. All right. So first stock uh, as part of this series is a stock which I believe is related to everyone's life. Uh, you know, when I did my CA and an MBA, the first thing I went is to create my resume in Nokri.com. Yes, I am talking about the stock called InfoEdge. It's a very fascinating stock, very interesting company, very interesting business model. And the way they have evolved as an overall organization in various aspects of consumer business, it's quite, quite exciting. Now, to uh, give his perspective and uh, detail analysis about InfoEdge, I have a very young guy. Um, I'm sure his resume is also there in InfoEdge and, and Nokri.com. I have a very young guy uh, whom I've been very, very impressed with the depth of study he does on a stock. A couple of months ago, I did a study with him on Reliance, uh, which is a widely covered stock these days. Um, so I'm happy that that video also got good response and Reliance the stock actually did quite well after we discussed that stock. So I have with me uh, Saket here. Saket. Hey, Saket. Hi. Can you see me? Hey. Hi. Yeah, I can see you. Good to see you. Good to have you again. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Vivek. How are you? All well. All well. Fantastic, Saket. You are, you are looking younger. You are looking uh, energetic, happy. Good to see that. I believe you're resume in nokri.com is getting a lot of attention that's why you're smiling <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't <laughs> hello great uh, so sake the format of this is that we are going to talk about this stock okay and mm -hmm. uh, i've read your blog i know you write really really well about each and every stock which you have covered uh, so give us your perspective about this stock what's unique about this stock what do you think about the future perspective of this stock? Not from the business perspective. Remember, we are recording this video for investors. So we have to give them a perspective of what an investor should do, whether this is the right time to invest, whether one should exit the stock. These are our questions which needs to be answered. And um, yeah. don't worry, uh, I will also chip in with my quantitative view by doing my chartical understanding of that stock so that people mm -hmm. will have more clarity in terms of numbers what price is a good price or what price is a bad price for this stock. All right, so I'm going to make you the presenter. So here you are, you are the presenter now. So take us through that journey of what do you think InfoEdge is all about? So, so primarily to talk about InfoEdge, we need to understand how the internet landscape works, how businesses, internet businesses in India have evolved. Uh, we'll take some moment to look at the India opportunity. Now, what is interesting about InfoEdge particularly is the investments that they make from time to time in their investee companies. And okay. it kind of works like a like a small private equity firm in itself. In itself. So we'll, we'll take some moment to understand how private equity works and, and what their expectations are. And then we'll uh, we'll we'll spend some time understanding their financials, the verticals that they have, and and the competence of the management team. So if you look at the internet landscape, particularly uh, not just globally, not just in India but globally, you will often find these two terms being talked about a lot, which is CAC and LTV. So CAC is basically customer acquisition cost, and LTV stands for lifetime value of a customer. 
So typically, you will see all all the big unicorns uh, that are there in India today having billion dollar valuations. Most of them are not making profit. So all of them are loss making business. They are burning a lot of cash, and that cash burn is basically to acquire a lot of customers and build a certain scale. Now the whole concept behind this is once you have enough scale. uh you will be able to you know get more valuation get more money coming in and and this is a vicious cycle which is going on right partly this is because the 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 venture capital money or the private equity money is almost available at a 0% vac now vac is basically weighted average cost of capital so today if say you're starting any business you're either taking debt or equity you would have a certain cost to it something in the range of 12 to 15% uh thereby expecting that the business would at least be beating my cost of capital but but in a internet business today and specifically a business which is in a very nascent stage the idea is to kind of scale up first get a lot of users and then look at profitability and this is something uh, which is a very interesting tweet which i found was that do you think if someone had a superior product than linkedin would they get funded in silicon valley and to which so so benedict evans is one of a former uh, private equity investor from a16z so he said once you have won a better product does not beat network effects you need a way either to unbundle the product or to build a new layer that makes it irrelevant right so kind of putting this to nokri.com right so today nokri.com uh, which is like the the main vertical of info edge and almost contributes 110% to their ebitda because the other verticals are not yet making money uh the fact that they they were first to the market and they were able to scale up so fast in terms of getting the cv database on one end at the other end going to corporates and saying that look the kind of database of cvs that we have today no one else can match it right and we'll see how that difference is in terms of the dominance and in terms of the india opportunity today uh, you know the mobile penetration today is almost at 96% plus data costs have exponentially come down thanks to jio consumption has gone up and uh, you know this is uh, a very interesting chart that nokri had kind of put it in their annual report in for edge uh, wherein as on 2020 we have close to 640 million users that use internet today in india mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, out of the 640 million the, the majority like more than 50% of them are from rural india right so the whole theme on uh, rural to urban and plus more screen time in urban users kind of makes you understand that there's a big opportunity in the space of internet and mobile devices so on and so forth and this is relevant not for nokri's core business but for the investy companies that Nok- that info edge is invested in right now typically uh, you know we we are always told you know this is something which howard marks had put in one of his presentations is that you know the more risk you take the more return you get uh but the correct way to look at this graph is basically uh higher you go up on the risk paradigm the range of return uh, varies right and and at this level so so say if you are at a lower risk level the the range of return would on the upside and the downside is is uh, kind of skewed to a to a short extent but when you go higher up the risk ladder the range of return kind of varies so it can either go 10x up or 10x down and this is typically how a private equity firm works right so again uh, someone who's bought 100 dollars in the apple ipo you know it's always better to say that oh that would be worth 100000 dollars today but what people don't tell you is that if you invested 100 dollars in apple's ipo you would have endured close to 23 declines of 20% or more right so the volatility often is is quite high so again that is typically how a private equity works there is a high risk high return trade off they would probably prefer scalability over profitability and what is also important in any business that works on network effects which is nokri linkedin so on and so forth is that you have to reach a critical mass right and that critical mass is the minimum number of users that you need for the business to fund itself so you have enough users so you will have enough customers so you will have enough cash flows and this this cycle basically goes on and typically a private equity firm would look at a favorable exit over a long term commitment although long term commitment uh, you have impact investment and a lot of new avenues that are coming up but uh, but typically this is what how private equity works now in terms of the management team that info edge has right so sanjeev bikchandani uh, you know uh, like he is a internet entrepreneur that a lot of new age startups look up to at the same time you know typically while the management team of info edge is quite robust i typically want to talk about two people which is 
Mr. Sanjeev Bikchandani, who's the founder, and uh, also uh, Hitesh Obray, who's the managing director. So, so Hitesh Obray has been a sales guy, and he's typically spent a lot of time in sales in the company, and that is kind of what drives a lot of revenue for in for for Nokri, which is the main vertical of InfoEdge. And you know, these were a few snippets that I got in terms of uh, in terms of the thought process that SB has. So, Nokri was you know uh, when he was asked a question on how do you manage a crisis. So, I managed to. get together these five points uh, basically he was asked you know how do you basically manage a crisis and he he mentioned that nokri nokri was basically born out of a recession right so the business was built when the erstwhile prime minister said that you know our coffers are empty and uh, again uh, the the whole idea of nokri initially nokri basically started as a salary survey business so what sb would do is they would go up to recruiters they would go up to candidates who have been offered new jobs in the iams and he would ask for their offer offer letters and and just uh, get a sense of what the amount is and he would circulate this information among recruiters as a product and from there nokri evolved right and the one line which i'll probably uh, stress a little bit upon is is point number 4 where he talks about customers money is more important than investors money and this is something which you will find uh you know uh, being repeated time and again it's also there in in the annual report uh, of 2020 of infoedge where uh, sb talks about the importance of getting the money from the customer first and then chasing investors so uh throughout the evolution of nokri be it their own business or the investi companies businesses they've always focused more on getting uh, incremental returns rather than trying to burn cash to acquire users so if you look at the verticals uh, jumping right into the numbers uh, they have three verticals which they report separately so there's recruitment there's matrimonial and there's real estate right now uh, as you can see uh, the 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 recruitment vertical has almost doubled in sales in the last 5 years at a cagr of almost 15% so it has gone up from almost 5300 crores to 9000 crores now uh, again because of covid you know there were a lot of job losses happening people uh, had to be uh, had to be switching jobs but at the same time a lot of new businesses came up right so a lot of uh, ed tech kind of took away automation you know took up as a theme in a very big way so a lot of recruitment activity started happening there now irrespective of whether you know uh, jobs exist a lot of job losses happen the churn always keeps on happening right and that is where you can see nokri benefiting out of that so uh, if you look at the operating ebitda as i mentioned the other verticals uh, report a loss so matrimonial has been reporting losses uh, now now the other interesting thing to see see here is uh, the real estate vertical right if you look at the cagr of the last 5 year growth uh, real estate has has the highest cagr so it has almost grown at almost 21% annually for the last 5 years uh, right from 1000 crores to 2300 crores now uh the other interesting thing to see here is just because you know management walks the talk in terms of reducing their cash burn and you know getting to that critical mass so that you can finally achieve profitability so you can see real estate almost was doing 1000 crores of loss in 2016 and you know uh, slowly that burn has been churned and finally in 2020 you can see that going in green right so uh, recruitment has been green throughout and the growth has been progressing as as uh, as uh, as earlier and on the matrimonial vertical it's still in a growth phase so you can see uh, that the burn is happening and, and it's still reporting losses but you know we've seen uh, the track record of the management in terms of making uh, nokri.com profitable we've seen that we've seen recently uh, they making the real estate vertical profitable uh, you know about time we might just see that the matrimonial vertical also uh, achieves that critical mass so that the network effects uh, work to the best of their benefits now now today in a online world where you know we are seeing google going after almost everything right how does a vertical like a nokri or a 99 acres or a jeevan sathi or for that matter even shiksha uh, profits right so if you see the focus today is going from horizontal to vertical so today if i have to search for a restaurant uh, i would prefer searching it on zomato rather than going on google first although there is no denying that uh, both are not comparable but that is what the trend has been so if today if you have to order medicines instead of maybe going to amazon you would go to a net meds so the focus today of commerce or or a lot of businesses is going from horizontal to vertical and people are moving from generic to specific right so in terms of the job uh, job 
traffic data traffic share data now this is something nokri uh, which nokri shares in their annual report annually so uh, nokri is almost right up there right it's almost higher than 90% in terms of the share that they have and you know when when you talk about competition monster.com has been uh, in india for quite some time we've seen linkedin also make inroads but but the dominance is still uh, a long way to go and this is where you know all those things that we where that we saw it at the starting of this presentation in terms of the network effects the first mover advantage moving to scale at the same time being profitable so nokri has kind of scored on all those factors right uh, now that is something which is translated into their financials as well so as i mentioned right any online business is always hungry for cash to burn money to acquire customers and to achieve scale but i think nokri has al already gone through that phase and today if you see uh like this is again a extract from their annual report their their cash balance is almost at 13000 crores right the cash balance has been improving uh if i were to start from the top line uh again on a overall basis uh, there's a 15% cagr now as i mentioned right uh, nokri almost uh has a effective cushion for them to support the losses of say the matrimonial vertical or the real estate vertical and that today real estate has become profitable so so you can see that the operating profit ebitda is higher than uh, than is is actually uh, the operating ebitda of nokri is higher than the total ebitda so that has also grown at a healthy phase uh, healthy rate so almost at a 30% cagr over the last 5 years it has gone from 1300 crores to 4000 crores and so has the margin right so uh, right from 27% the margin today is close to at 36% so there's almost a 33% expansion in the ebitda margin of the company and uh, you know while all this has happened uh, the headcount has also improved so the company themselves have also been prospering and uh, so far so good right so if i were to look at look at the balance sheet size right now any any internet business will have a very lean balance sheet so we've seen this in the case of facebook as well we've seen this in case of other tech companies so so all their profits kind of is is going into their shareholders fund which is their reserves and uh, today almost uh, on on the on the equity and liability side they really have uh, close to nil or zero debt right and if i look at the asset side of the balance sheet so uh, as we saw in the previous slide right uh, there is almost uh, there is almost significant cash that uh, that nokri is sitting on and uh, that kind of is sitting inside their current assets right now the final part which kind of sets nokri apart uh, infoage apart is is basically their investments in investi companies so as on 31st march 20 they have now sorry these figures are in million so so they have around 1081 crores of investments that they've made in investi companies and what is very interesting about this is all these investments till date are being carried at cost right so their total investment in zomato stands at close to 152 crores right and this is still being carried at cost uh in the last round of funding that zomato got uh, i think they had a valuation of close to 3.5 billion dollars so if you were to do like a back of the envelope calculation that stake itself in itself translates to roughly 6300 crores uh similarly you know the other investment that they made was in policybazaar.com uh, again uh, they've made investment of close to 560 crores i think this happened 3 to 4 years back and you know in the last round of funding that policy bazaar got they had a 1.5 billion dollar valuation which kind of makes this stake valued at close to 1700 crores so till now uh, they've written down close to 30% of their investments at cost uh, but at the same time you know the upside uh, like spe specifically with with the case of zomato uh, this can almost go 40x 50x right so that is uh, this is this is the most interesting part which i find about infoage apart from their management team their their verticals in terms of nokri and and you know the network effects so on and so forth and what they've done is last year they've they've also launched uh, launched like a aif category fund which in the name of infoedge ventures and and they they want to do this uh, in terms of uh, doing it through a fund and they've committed close to they they want to keep the fund size at close to 750 crores Uh, out of which 350 crore has been committed and 150 crore has already been disbursed right so so just to just to show you something so like zomato if if i go deep down into the balance sheet look at how it is being carried so if you can see zomato is still being carried at cost 
uh, again, you can see if you total this up, it's close to 87 plus 60. So almost 148 crores is what is being carried. And as you can see, the total investment is close to 152 crores. So, so that typically is, is what uh, I would like to talk about uh, in terms of uh, what is interesting. In terms of risks, there's always, you know, you might not get the exits on, on the investments that you wish to. There's always threat of other competitors, right? So tomorrow, if uh, a different guy comes in with, with a lot of PE money and, and wants to make something like Nokri, but again, getting to that, uh, to the critical mass of the network effects and reaching that scale might take time. So it's not that Nokri will sit idle and not try to do something which kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, is there to fend off the competition. And again, if there's an overall blip in the economic activity, most of the internet businesses can uh, be uh, compromised in terms of their profitability and growth. So one interesting thing which I would like to talk about in terms which kind of underscores the competitive intensity and the management intent. So when, you know, uh, a few years back when housing.com was, was there all in the news and uh, uh, this is again something which I read in, in, in a book uh, how I almost blew it in during that time, you know, Sanjeev Bichandani, uh, so, so, so the erstwhile CEO of housing.com, he called up SB and he said that, look, uh, you have the business, we have the product. Why don't we merge? Right. And to which SB replied that if you have the product, then how come we have the business? Right. So, so they've, they've seen a lot of competition come in and go by and they've, uh, till now scored, uh, well, although in, in, in the real estate vertical magic bricks is, is the market leader. But you know, 99 acres is also right there. So, so, so that is basically what uh, I would like to talk about in uh, about on the on the fundamental side and on the business side. So, over to you, Vivek, if you have any thoughts on this. Fantastic, I, Saket, you have nailed it. Uh, I think the core of Nokri, uh, the way you have explained, is phenomenal. I think Saket, it's a very unique uh, company. Um, so, you know, there used to be a concept of holding company earlier where there yep. was one holding company and then there were a lot of subsidiaries. But the fact mm -hmm. that the holding company never had their own uh, its own business, there was always a holding company discount in the market. Correct. Well, Correct. If you see, Nokri also falls into that category, but their core business of Nokri uh, is such a such a vibrant and such a growth oriented business that uh, that itself is driving that whole value of this whole ecosystem. Yep. Secondly, I think a very interesting thing is that this is the only, uh, I would say, ecosystem or a setup where people can invest as a retail investor into a private equity setup. So just imagine yep. that someone can buy one share of Nokri at whatever price, I think it's 3000 or something, which is quoted right now. So in 3000 mm -hmm. rupees, you can actually participate in a private equity working which is such a unique thing. Yeah. And I don't know how many people have actually thought from that perspective that can you actually invest 3000 rupees in startups? I don't think so. There are angel networks. So you need to invest say 1 lakh, 2 lakh or 5 lakh at least. You have to commit that amount. Or there are private equity funds where you can invest through AIFs. But there also the ticket size is 1 crore at least. So just by yes. having 3000 rupees, there is the only possibility in India called Nokri where you can invest in a private equity mm -hmm. business. Yeah. What is your thought so, on that point? Yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a very interesting point. Uh, so, so this is also a question which a lot of people have in their mind, that probably all of these things are priced in, right? That, okay, uh, you have a stake, so on and so forth. But this is also something which the management has also consciously, you know, told, if you read up on almost the last six or seven years of annual reports, they keep saying this that look from time to time we keep taking these stakes in investing companies and if whenever we need funds we can always monetize this stake right so whenever you see you know there's there's some talk about say zomato raising a new round or you'll see that zomato kind of laid off a few employees you know immediately you can see some action happening in the stock and that is some that is somewhere where we can you know probably use your expertise in understanding how that works but mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different from a hold co company discount in my view because mm -hmm. uh, you know while while i was uh, while i had written this blog on infoedge a lot of readers told me to read about a very niche small cap stock which was zelpmock right so it's complex uh, spelled uh, uh, the other way 
and when i was going through their annual report so they also have a similar model where they take a lot of stake in in small companies they've been valuing all their investments at fair value right and they've made that disclosure that look at cost it is x at fair value it is x plus x and that is where then i could relate that okay nokri is still valuing it at x and right tomorrow say for example if zomato goes ip uh, it goes for an ipo or if say other investors are coming in and infoage wants to exit right so we can then see this movement happening through say fetpl or or through other comprehensive income and then we can see a huge eps growth coming in right again this is a very if then else situation but purely possible right right so another perspective i want to give here is that you can't use parameters like pe ratio in valuing absolutely uh, these kind of stocks because they will always look like expensive because their eps is coming from their core business but the stock is getting valued because of the hidden value inside their other uh, investments so the yep. pe of nokri if i remember last time when i saw it was almost 200 now 200 pe stock you will never touch because it's very expensive but you know yeah. you can't do that uh, you know black and white comparison with other industry or other companies when it comes to pe plus also we have to understand that this is a growth sector and yeah. there is actually no benchmarking of pe for a growth company this has to be mm-hmm. well understood now even ashwath damodaran has said this that but i i need, really need to understand again that i need to go back to my books and talk about how to value a growth company because the logic mm-hmm. of pe doesn't hold well for a growth yes you can look at peg ratio which is the growth and the pe together but then mm-hmm. for example reliance which was a 12 13 pe stock almost a year, almost 6 7 months ago now it is almost mm-hmm. 30 pe stocks and it has become expensive yep. right why mm-hmm. because from cyclical business to value business to growth business so the growth trajectory can take a valuation benchmarking to any level so i would mm-hmm. uh, sincerely advise all the uh, you know guys who are listening to this that do not do a uh, you know apple to apple comparison of valuation metrics of nokri with any other stocks it will be very very different and to certain extent it has a component of value as well as growth growth comes yeah. from its core business of nokri and and the other two which he mentioned but the value unlocking will happen once they dilute their stake or sell their stake in their other yeah. investing companies for example even the if they don't company. dilute right yeah sorry uh, no they even if they don't dilute, dilute yeah yes. but say if if it lists on an exchange and you really have to start valuing uh, your investments at fair value then yeah. you will have to do the mark to market right Uh, yeah. So, so that again is is a management call in terms of how they want to show it. So, yeah. so yeah, that that I believe is something which we need to think of. So, one point which I just wanted to make is that because now Indian companies will be able to list abroad, the whole provision mm-hmm. is be- is getting simplified thanks to Geo. Things are getting pretty simplified for everyone. I think uh, Zomato and other investing companies will get huge benefit out of it. So, hopefully, yeah. fundamentally, this stock will. find value so if i have to ask you saket fundamentally 1 out of 10 and it's a very impromptu question i am asking you <laughs> you can prefer not to answer but i'll i'll prefer if you answer 1 out of 10 if i have to ask you whether will you put your money in nokri at this stage 1 out of 10 10 being that yes you will one is that not really sure yeah so like personally i do have a position in this stock so there's no point uh, trying to friend from that so that so maybe i'll have a confirmation bias uh, yeah. maybe say the way i would look at it now this is a question a lot of readers of my blog also keep posting from time to time okay at this price what right so even if say today if i have to invest say 100 rupees in nokri i'll not go ahead and put my entire 100 rupees today i'll probably stagger it at maybe 10 rupees a week or 10 rupees in two weeks so that even if say the price goes up or down in say the next 2 to 3 months which a lot of times the volatility keeps kicking in i will have a good average price to my name, to 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 my uh, new purchase right so say if it corrects by 10% i have a price lower if it goes up by 10% i have the benefit of positive averaging so as long as personally if i am convinced about a business and if i see that okay uh, that this is something which i can have but not at at a valuation which goes out of whack right so even at this level since i am convinced about the story i would probably not 
look so much at maybe okay it's stretched or or the p is high again as you mentioned p is not the right metric to look at a stock like nokri but yeah i would probably go ahead and still uh, make a fresh investment if uh, i need to okay okay so friends uh, people who want to invest or who are already invested i would also advise you a very peter lynch type of investing model is that you should have your resume in nokri you should uh, have your user id in 99 acre and you know you should uh, use zomato because the more you use their product i think you will be able to understand what's happening inside the company and you can time your investment accordingly there is no other option because in growth companies the only way you can remain invested in growth companies in by investing uh, by using their services and make sure that the quality of their services is as per your expectation and you keep on riding the stock price because stock price is depending upon the customer satisfaction overall in growth companies now uh, let me also saket give a perspective uh, technically of this stock uh, so i will take the uh, screen share sure are you able to see my screen yes okay so this is chart of nokri so you know just to explain you uh, so there this is a candlestick chart these are the volumes uh this are this is a rs indicator which is a relative strength indicator which shows the relative strength of this stock vis a vis the market index okay and this is okay. rsi which is the momentum indicator which defines the momentum inside a stock uh it's like uh, you know there is a car race and uh, you want to measure relatively whether your car is uh, running at a better speed or not than the other car now that's rs and if you want to see your speedometer and judge whether you are running at a good speed or not that's rsi okay so this is my template of uh, doing technicals and figuring out the price momentum in a stock so this is a monthly chart you see the monthly chart the stock has been rs has been above zero so rs above zero means the stock has been outperforming a broader index okay and i also believe in the theory of big operator in any stock so whenever there is a high volume happening in any stock that's where you can safely presume that the operator is there at that price an operator not necessarily on the negative connotation could be an institution or a big guy who has purchased the stock and he is there he or it is there mm -hmm. in the stock okay so look at this chart uh, this is a monthly chart since i think this is what date since uh, December 2013, the RS of this stock has been always greater than zero. So the stock mm -hmm. has been continuously outperformer in the market since 2013. Okay. So that really shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so when you say RS is is basically a, a parameter to the broader index. So here, are you? Is it against the Nifty 50 or is it against uh, like what's the benchmark here? Nifty. so i am taking the benchmark nifty. nifty because nifty is widely followed and it is also okay. traded instrument that's why benchmarking nifty is more relevant i can okay. also do a sector level benchmarking and i can look mm -hmm. at relevant sector indices for info edge but mm -hmm. even if i do it with nifty it is fine there is no not much loss okay. i am i am looking at yeah okay so look at this the price when it made a breakout from these levels around 470 475 since then rs has been more than zero and every time it comes down it doesn't go below zero this is such a beautiful tool which gives you a very strong understanding of the inherent strength of this stock that at every price okay. point there is a buyer available in this stock whenever price corrects for some reason and the reason could be some uh, negative publicity about zomato that someone yep. supply guy was eating food because of that zomato was getting criticized in social media and the impact of that was clearly visible in nokri stock as well because zomato is nokri nokri is zomato right now right yeah so the the momentum monthly momentum in that stock is still very very strong this is a 21 period moving average which gives an indication of the strength in that stock let's not mm -hmm. look at these two candles because these are the candles which are aberrations when market fell in march yeah. this stock obviously went down as well but guys who were ready with the cash in hand they were actually the one who capitalized on this opportunity okay now look at the weekly chart 
so in monthly chart now we have made our mind that yes this stock is in a positive territory okay now yep. if you see the weekly chart as well the strength is still above zero so the stock on a weekly basis is also showing strength plus the rs is also above 60 that means the inherent speed of that stock is also better you know if it is above 50 it's okay it is above 60 is fantastic that means there is a very strong build up of momentum in that stock so if at all you have intent if you already have a stock there is no reason why you should sell it because there is a very strong inherent current inside that stock but if you intend to buy the stock you can have two option either you buy when there is a breakout or you buy when the stock cools off a bit typically when a call, when the stock is will cool off this rs will come near zero and rsi also will come near 50 that's the time you should go aggressive with your buying okay but mm. if you still want to buy something on monday you can probably buy say 25% not allocating full capital into this stock at this point maybe 25% yeah. and when the stock cools down a bit you know if it goes up you should be happy that i still have 25% of my allocation done in this stock but if the stock yeah. uh, closes uh, cools down a bit and these indicators suggest that yes this is a time when stock is cooling down and it is coming near its support level that is a time probably mm -hmm. you can go 50% add on to that 25% investment which you have already done okay yeah now let me go to the daily chart so monthly we can still see a bullishness weekly we have seen a bullishness and daily chart the idea is to find out the swing lows you know if you see any stock price there will always be swings from low to high then again new low mm -hmm. then high then new low and typically an uptrending stock will see higher highs and higher lows you understand this yeah, okay. this is a low this is a low which is higher than the previous low this is a low which is higher than the previous low so an uptrending stock will always have higher highs and higher lows very simple Highly. concept and a good strong undercurrent stock will always have rs more than 0 typically if you see this stock continuously on daily chart as well this stock is having rs more than 0 and rsi more than 50 all right so what does this suggest that this is a good stock to get into if you want to go in right now then probably 25% you can allocate but if the stock ideally the stock should correct it's always good risk reward if you enter when there is a retracement of a stock so either there will be a breakout or there will be a retracement it's always better to give more money when there is a retracement so the best yep. price point for me in this stock if i have to go all in buy a lot of this stock will be this price now because this swing low was respected for long period of time it went up and there is a new low which has come up so maybe this low or you can also look at this low if you are a short term trader so this okay. low would be approximately here so this range 32 to 33 this is a very very interesting range for this stock okay so if if the market suppose fall for any reason for example something happens to trump or say singapore nifty went down and morning you will see some kind of a selling pressure in that stock so typically those are the times when a sensible investor who believes in a story of a stock will re, will keep the cash ready and deploy at a price point which will have a very strong buying support this is typically called demand zone where there is always a buyer available to buy the stock did did i did i uh, give you a perspective good perspective about the price movement yeah i think uh, my technical training has started today thanks to you okay. so so yeah <laughs> okay so friends i hope uh, this uh, analysis was uh, useful uh, uh, this stock is definitely a hyper beta stock very very aggressive stock because of obvious reasons but you know if you are someone who wants to invest in these kind of stocks i think uh, info edge is one stock we should look at um, just a small disclaimer uh, saket is invested i am also invested uh, so it's a vested interest which we are presenting 
but uh, this video was recorded purely for education purpose i hope you understood the art of analyzing fundamentally a stock and i hope i was able to communicate the technical part of how to analyze a stock there could be different ways of analyzing a stock because technical analysis is is like an abyss fundamental is like there is no end to fundamental you can make a judgment through different manner but our sincere effort was to give you one way of analyzing this stock i hope you found that effort to be worth it and uh, you will like uh, this video and share this with your friends saket anything to end this video yeah so uh, i think uh, we've covered the fundamental part we've covered the technical part as well personally like for a lot of data i did use uh, stock edge i mean i do have to do that plug right because because the utility is so high not that you've told me to do this plug but yeah i mean i have been using stock edge in my mobile for almost 4 uh, years now like see, that was even before i started writing right and you know a lot of times when you look through the data and the fact that okay i click on asset then i click on current asset then i click on cash a lot of times i get a lot of cues from that so i think the more you keep scanning on data the more insights you will get and you know that is how you basically uh, strengthen your belief or you strengthen your thesis once once you are convinced with data and i think for that we have a great uh, venue to to get the data organized in one place thank so, you yeah, so so for you uh, i would urge all your viewers to keep using stockage as frequently they can thank you uh, saket uh, uh, as you said that uh, i didn't ask you to say this <laughs> so thank yeah. you for this surprise That's on and, record. And, yeah yeah and a kind gesture of uh, highlighting the utility which we are providing to all of you i hope you guys liked it uh, keep supporting us uh, i'll keep on hunting for people like saket i will request saket to do more research in more quality stocks and come back with his the theories saket writes brilliant blogs his uh, blog link i'm going to give just below this video stay connected with him uh, he has a twitter handle i will give you the link below stay connected with him uh, he's a nice guy doing some good work uh, young chap um and uh, you know uh, i'm also doing decently good job so stay connected with me as well <laughs> bye bye guys take care bye bye thank you